So finally, we are ready to talk about our position space wave functions evolving in time. Now, there's two pieces that we have to bring in to do this. So if you haven't mastered this already, if you don't understand these other two topics yet, this isn't going to make a lot of sense. First is the idea that our energy of our energy eigenstates is what determines our time evolution and that you have to work in your energy basis before you introduce time evolution. And we originally met this with spin and we really just had two energy eigenstates to worry about and you converted whatever your spin state was to the energy basis. You had your energy eigenstates, introduced your phase and then you could convert back. So we're still doing that. But now we're working in the position representation and so we have to take whatever wave function we have, convert to the energy eigenstates of the position representation and then introduce the time evolution. So again, there's two ideas that we're bringing from previous videos, one from just like the last section and one from the last chapter. So how do we get a general wave function in the spatial and time representation? So you see the summation, right? We're summing over C sub n. Why? Each of these n's is indicating a different energy eigenstate. So the previous sets of videos says, hey, how do we find that? And that's where we did that, that integration from negative infinity to infinity of our, right? It, it, wasn't, it wasn't great. Our, our energy eigenstate, remember that phi is always meaning a specific energy eigenstate, a star, and then your psi, and, and you have to do this to find what those C sub n are. Now this, we, we get from uh, solving our um, energy eigen uh, equation, right? So this is from solving the energy eigen equation. And the key is here that you have to know what your potential is. So in general, we don't have that many different potentials we're gonna work with. So far, we've met the infinite well and the finite well. We can meet two-dimensional wells, infinite, three-dimensional infinite well. We're going to move into some polar and spherical coordinates in a few chapters. But so knowing what your energy eigenstates are will solve your energy eigenstate equation, which I'm not writing down, but the key is that you have to know what your potential is. So you don't have to re-derive this from first principles every time, but say, what is my potential? What are the energy eigenstates for that potential? And then look, we introduce this. So we have to know what that is, and that's again coming from our energy eigenstate, what that energy in particular is. But then this phase is the same thing that we had when we were looking at spin. So this is, we can think of this as coming, for instance, from the Schrodinger equation, that the time derivative relates to your energy. So we get this. So this is just to introduce it. Again, the key is that this is going to be very complex, long problems to do, but you've met the pieces already. You've met the piece of calculating this. This is kind of the biggest, biggest involved piece. You've met how to do this. Again, so far we don't have that many potentials, so normally you're just gonna say, oh, this is my potential. I know the energy eigenstates are this. And then we just write down the phase the same way we did for spin. So uh, why might we want to do this? Well, some values are going to change in time. So what is going to depend on time? Now, not necessarily the probability of finding a given energy. We've already, we've already learned that if we say, oh, what's your probability of finding a given energy? Well, that's gonna go by these, and these don't really evolve in time. So what might depend on time? The expectation value of position will depend on time. The uncertainty in position is going to change with time. The probability, so let me write this out, my probability of finding my particle between two specific um, values of x. And remember that we can't ever say the probability of finding a very specific value of x. We can just do a range. But so this probability, for instance, of saying, oh, what's the probability of finding it in the left half of the well? Well, that's going to evolve in time. Um, and Obviously, just the wave function itself at some specific time is going to look different. Now, for most of these, it's going to be really hard. 
um, like the previous example where we started with a polynomial form, then you really do have an infinite number of energy eigenstates that you have to use to build that. So doing all of these calculations would be really hard in that situation. So there's only going to be certain situations where it is analytically solvable that you'll do it. So you might have situations where we're basically adding together the first and second um, energy eigenstate and then doing these calculations. So do make sure that in that case it's pretty simple to add this, this phase term and do out the math. For a lot of these polynomial ones it's, it's a lot harder. So um, this is again just kind of an introduction to this idea, um, but do recognize that this is going to be long and involved, um, but these are pieces that you've already met. We're now just putting a lot of ideas together.